Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. After a huge makeover, we just did the bathroom, which took a few days and a few weeks of planning. I felt like it was time to just do a thrift flip. I thought that that would be really fun. So we're gonna be heading off to the thrift store. So we're gonna kind of be venturing a little further away from our house today. If you guys enjoy thrift flips, I also have a huge playlist on my channel where I've done different styles, different pieces of home decor that are all from thrifted items that have turned into other things for your home. <laughs> so let's head to the thrift store, hoping, fingers crossed, that we can find some really cool stuff. Look what I found. Oh. I love this little canister so much. I don't love the top, but I do love the look how cute. It's like a Scandinavian Christmas. <gasps> Should I get it? It's only two ninety nine. this be something a lot of you guys were saying you wanted like some wall art stuff maybe we could we turn this into some kind of cool round wall art it's a little damaged probably fix some things on it okay wow the first thing that i found was this trunk and it's a great size it's great for storage it's not made well at all like the piece some pieces of wood are a lot longer than others it's missing a board down here red paint kind of rubbed on it i felt like it was kind of a perfect trunk to just like redo refinish turn it into a coffee table the next thing that i found was this gold tray it's a little beat up it's not in the greatest shape it has this painted on there this little design i think at once this little sticker said handcrafted created catalina memories watch you guys know that this is like super expensive i'm about to ruin it i have no idea oh it's made in japan maybe this could be some kind of wall art situation and then i also found this it's a cd holder so you can see all of the ridges where the cds slip right in and it's just a wood box and at first, you know how my brain always goes to pendant light. How cool would that be as a pendant light? I like how you could, it had this little cutout right here in between the wood. Light would shine through. I felt like that would be really cool. And then, uh, this is probably totally the wrong time of year to be starting this. I thought this would be really cool for a kind of a starter herb garden. Basil and oregano and rosemary. Uh, so those are the three pieces we're gonna work on and you guys are gonna be along for this process. Already what I like about this trunk are the handles. I love the metal heavy handles. They're trying to hurt somebody. Look at this nail. And here, look, it can just come off. So we may just be reattaching the wood. So I feel like that's where we should start. We should start, oh, well, there you go. <laughs> that was easy. I just found this sticker. This is from Pottery Barn. I'm all talking about how badly it's made and it's from Pottery Barn. I feel like someone did something to it. Pottery Barn, January 4th, 2010, inspected by James. So we're gonna remove the handles. Oh, these are super cool, I like that. I've been trying to think about a design I want, like a color palette that I wanna do this in. And you guys have been craving modern farmhouse decor for me forever. I just feel like there's so much of it on YouTube that I've been like, oh, everyone does that. Let me do something different. But you guys really want to see it. So why not do this a little bit farmhouse? Maybe we could paint the bottom a whitewashed kind of rust, rustic white and then stain the top have it like be a little bit two-tone. <laughs> Let's sand it first. Possibly painting this one. I don't need to get all of the stain off, but the lid, if we're staining it, we do. It 
So my hair is crazy. <laughs> this is called a tack brush and it's super like sticky tacky feeling. And it's great to use after you sanded down a project to make sure that there's no debris left, like sanding dust left on it before you paint or stain or something. So I've already got the Ben Zenzer primer that I like. I like the red can because it's shellac and it's like good for Ikea furniture. But this is also really good when this one is water-based, I believe. I have more of this one, so I think we're gonna go with this one for the bottom. I also have some, I'm gonna say this wrong, and you, I still don't know how to say it, Jacobine. Jac Jacobine. Jacob Jacobean. This is a darker stain color, so I thought it would add a good white to dark contrast for our coffee table top and bottom. Also sanded down all of the boards for the sides. So you just take this cloth, it's soup. It's a weird feeling actually. And we're just gonna wipe down everything. Benzinger primer. I'm priming the whole thing. If you guys do use this, the shellac one smells. Like always do it outside. The smell is really intense. This one is, isn't is at all. I'm not going to be painting the inside. The inside is in great shape actually, so there's no need to. I also like that the wood is super rough and rustic looking. I feel like it'll add to the farmhouse look that we're going for. I'm also using a paintbrush because this wood is like really textured. So a roller isn't really gonna get in all of those like, like small areas. Is there anything with edges that you need to paint? If you leave it flat, like on your drop cloth, it'll like stick to your drop cloth or have like little fibers. Kinsley's playing with a cup. <laughs> so you want to lift it. So I have a pack of these. <laughs> Kinsley! I have a pack of these plastic cups that I reuse over and over and over again for all of my lifting painting jobs. Set them here and then it helps to lift them off of your drop cloth so you can paint it. For our topper. Romeo helped me and he's a lot stronger so he was able to get more of whatever. I don't know if this is stain or gel stain maybe or paint. Who knows? I don't think it's going to give us the stained look that we want but I'm going to try it anyways. Why not? Their flips give us a great opportunity to test stuff out. You have to go somewhere. Let's test the little spot right here. Oh whoa. Anywhere where there's still that other residue, it's not staining. It's just wiping right off. Googled it. Confessions of a serial DIYer. This. Minwax Antique Furniture Refinisher. Oh, you need steel wool. Ooh, in minutes. I'm loving this. Stain comes right off. Well, we need this. It says to use some gloves and then pour it into a glass container and then dip the still wool in it and then scrub. It works. Wow, I should probably wear a mask. I'll put a mask on, but wow, it actually works. I've done this whole area to here so you can see the difference in this versus that. I'm actually going to reapply these little wood slats. Got wood glue here. I also saved all of the nails, so we're gonna use those. Reuse! Put one in the center to hold it. Then we'll make sure it's straight. And so I got this new piece of wood cut, nailed in, wood glued, and primed. The only problem is, is it's like not as rough as these are. It's like newer. I may have to take a hammer to it and like kind of beat it up a little bit so that it all kind of flows together. Okay, so now it's time to paint it. And I was like, well, I already have this white gallery and I don't think I really want this satin. It should be flat. We're gonna have to go to plan B. I don't think I'm gonna like this. Plan B is I painted these pumpkins in mocha cream. And this was one of my like fall colors. Kind of like the stain color, right? Well, not obviously, but like on a rag. Look how pretty that would be together. I only have a sample in it, but their sample, Benjamin Moore samples are a little bigger. Primer went pretty far on a little bit. So I'm hoping, love this color, Mocha Cream by Benjamin Moore. Oh. Gosh, I guess we're kind of just painting it instead of dry brushing it. It's a little creamier, you know, than just like a stark white. I love this color. I think it turned out so good. I think I'm gonna go back over it with a very, very dry brush of the deep caviar that I used in their bathroom 
faux shiplap. This is the deep caviar color. A really pretty um, black with a little bit of a brown like undertone. And I get a rag and essentially wipe almost all of it off. Super dry brush. And I just wanna kind of darken the edges, I think. Can you see those like darker lines there? Oh, I love that. Just to add a little bit of interest. I am also going to give the whole base and the topper that's stained this poly acrylic sealer. And they look so pretty now on this color without all that yellow. I didn't like that color before. It was weird. out of the way first. This one I'm thinking, right, so it's a CD holder, an indoor herb garden. So, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. I think we just need to add some holes to the bottom so it can have some drainage. The holes are pretty self-explanatory. I'm just gonna use something like this. Turn this baby over. <laughs> so that's how big I did the holes. I don't think it's big enough. Let's level up a little bit. Definitely want to spray paint it. I have burlap, kind of like a khaki color. I also have dark walnut, which is like almost black brown. And then I also have just flat black paint. Oh, we're gonna add feet. <laughs> we're gonna add feet too. I want this to sit underneath the window seal because I think I've done a little bit of research on the herb plants and kind of what I'm looking for. Planting like ones together that need the same type of sunlight or the same drying out periods and water periods. Please put in the comments any tips you guys have. I welcome it all. I want to try and get good at this. So before we decide on the paint color, let's do feet. I have plenty of scrap wood that we can make feet and I just want to kind of raise it up a tad. I knew me saving weird stuff would come in handy one day. So these are actually from a cabinet I built probably from Ikea. They're little slivers of wood. You see that? And that's literally exactly what I wanted. I wanted just, look at that. Some wood glue, put some of that on. Put it right there on the corner. When in doubt for me, always go black. So while that dries, I am going to figure out how to get some herbs. Oh my gosh, okay, I'm on my phone. We are super close to my house and I just picked up my herbs. <gasps> it already smells so amazing in my car. So I had to meet a $20 minimum. So I did kind of branch out and get a little bit of, um, of different things. I got a lemon basil because they had that. Cilantro, this is rosemary. I also got lemon thyme. Look at this guy, oregano. My gut is telling me not to repot them because some of these may need different types of soil to thrive and maybe they shouldn't all be together. But since our container is so large and long, it's still drying outside, containers inside until I get more comfortable or I get better at keeping them alive.
Okay, so for our final thrift flip, this is a little bit of a wild card for me because I'm like not quite sure. Very few ideas for what I could do with this. Looking for something specifically to turn into wall art. I also went to the flea market recently. I'm gonna be posting a flea market shop with me and decor haul of all of the things that I got over on my vlog channel. That'll be out on Tuesday. So I post a lot more on there, so you guys wanna check it out. I found this vintage, very heavily textured wallpaper for five bucks. I was thinking of cutting this paper into a circle and putting it on, on the inside and gluing it down so that it has some texture. You know that trend where they dip picture frames or they only paint like half of it and turn it into wall art? I was also thinking I could do that. Let me cut some of this and let's see. I can't envision it for some reason. So I'm just gonna trace the bottom inside because I actually want the wallpaper to sit on the inside. If we can cut this perfectly enough, we might get away with a really clean edge. We put it on top. I'm gonna sleep on it. I'll see you guys in the morning. <laughs> Okay, it's officially the next day. I slept on it. I still I still really want to try this out. I feel like I overthink stuff sometimes and I'm like, but what's its purpose? <laughs> And when it could just be for something really pretty. Don't have proper wallpaper adhesive. I do have Mod Podge. So for something like this, I feel like it'll be sufficient enough. Foam brush to apply it. I think when working with Mod Podge, you want to give it a generous amount and then just let it dry. And we'll apply the rest of the glue. books and let it dry. As the books and the vase were kind of waiting down the center, I went around and just like held down the edges so that they were all really stuck really well. So I just went around a couple of times, spinning it, kind of like putting pressure on the edges so that until it was all stuck down. I could do a combination of paint and then spray paint on like half of it. So I have vintage gold, which is a lot brighter and I have satin bronze. And I think satin bronze actually looks a little more vintage like the actual tray. And I have this Maui sand chalk paint. Pretty. Sometimes it's hard to see it in your head. Like, is it gonna come out okay? I really like the texture of this wallpaper too. I'm also gonna paint the inside rim of this gray, just so it's all gray on the inside. It's all dry now. I left a little bit of white showing in the wallpaper. I felt like it added a little bit of a vintagey rustic look to it. It didn't have to be all perfect. So I've got some frog tape. This wallpaper is very textured, so I wonder how straight this line is actually gonna turn out. Just a straight line. Also gonna block this part with something so that I don't get any spray paint on this part too. This is all dry, so we just need to peel off the tape. That's a pretty crisp line. Look at that. Does it feel like it's missing something for you guys? You know, it would be cool with a mirror, a smaller mirror on top of it now. This is like made like a great background. I have square ones left over from the Ikea mirror that I did and it doesn't fit. 11 or 12. Well, while we figure out what to do there, I wanna add something to the back so that we can actually hang it up. These hammer in picture hanging little things and you just literally hammer them in exactly where you need to. You just wanna make sure that you're putting it in the center so that our line is exactly centered. Twelve inches. Okay. Kinsley and I went to Joanne's. We got the twelve-inch one. Literally, could be a background for anything. Maybe you could do like a picture if you wanted to on it. This was actually the biggest that they had. We'll do a combination of E6000 glue and hot glue. The hot glue will help this E6000 hold on to dry. Also had a 50% off coupon to Joanne, so I got it for three bucks. So that we could keep the design kind of looking like that dip piece. I really wanted the bottom to look dipped. I went ahead and marked off the mirror as well and spray painted it with the satin bronze as well. So it kind of looked a little more dipped. I like it so much. I feel like it finally came together.
So I hope you guys enjoyed flipping these thrifted finds with me into really cool pieces of decor. And definitely gonna be rehoming the trunk coffee table to Romeo's sister Suzette and her wife. We just did their bathroom. This is a perfect thing for your living room and they need a new coffee table, so it's perfect. But if you guys enjoy thrift flips, definitely check out my playlist. And if you're not already subscribed, I post room makeovers, DIY home decor, and thrift flips on my channel every Sunday, so you're not gonna wanna miss them. So hit that subscribe button and the little bell notification so you know exactly when I upload. And we will see you guys next week. Bye guys. These make me look like Mickey Mouse, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry.